years ago, I was getting on a plane and uh, uh, I was coming back from Buffalo, New York, and uh, I had a, I'd been bumped up to first class and was sitting there and uh, had an empty seat next to me. And I was thinking, oh, thank God, you know, I've, I've ministered, I preached, prayed, prophesied for several days, I was exhausted, didn't really feel like talking to anybody. And uh, so I, I just kind of, I had a, had a magazine and I was paging through it. And at the very last minute, a man came onto the plane, sat down next to me, and it was very apparent that the guy was drunk out of his mind. And he sat down next to me. Well, I really had no interest in, in talking to this guy. Okay? So I just kind of buried my face in my magazine and kind of turned over towards the window. And he kept talking to me. He like didn't get, he did not get the hints. Like I would, I'd, I would answer him, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. How many would kind of get the hint? She doesn't really want to talk to me. He didn't get the hint, okay? And so he thought, I'm going to engage her. So he started touching my leg. Now I wanted to knock his head off, okay? But when he did that, I heard the Lord say to me, put your magazine down and talk to the man. <sighs> Fine. Okay. <laughs> I did not want to, all right? So I put my magazine down, and we're now starting to taxi to the runway. And he just turns to me, and he's trying to make conversation. And he says, so what do you do for a living? And y'all know I have several ways that I answer that. I can say I'm a pastor. And they'll go, oh, a woman pastor, and we'll have that whole conversation. Or I can say I'm a prophet, and they'll get up and they'll change seats, okay? Um, Tom and Faye, just one time, I haven't done this yet, but one time I would like to say I'm an exorcist, because I actually do cast out devils, you know, and I'd like to see how they react if I say that. I've not tried it yet, but on that day, I was just trying to get through the conversation God asked me to have, and so I just said, well, I'm a minister. Well, that man blows up. A minister, a minister, you, bleepity, bleepity, bleep. He just started cussing me out at the top of his voice. And I'm sitting there saying, God, you're the one that told me to talk to him. What in the world is the deal? And the flight attendant was like, sir, sir, you need to quiet down. You need to quiet down. So he got quiet and he's like, <sighs> just seething, sitting next to me. His face is beat red. And in the middle of that tirade, I just had to drop down in my spirit. Number one, how many recognize this wasn't about me? This wasn't about me. And so I just quickly listened to the Lord. Because if God told me to talk to this man, God's got a key for this man's freedom. Amen? And so I dropped down in my spirit, and I heard the Lord say two things really quickly. So as soon as he kind of wound down from <laughs> his tirade, his rant, um, I said to him, um, well, I really want to thank you for sharing your heart. I mean, I didn't really know how to bridge what he was doing to me sharing the gospel. So I just said... Thank you for sharing your heart. Um, but while you were sharing, um, I felt like the Lord told me to tell you, he's so very sorry for how that priest treated you when you were a boy. That was not his heart towards you, and that was wrong. And the Lord said to tell you, he's so, so sorry. And the man's mouth just dropped open. He said, how could you know that? And I said, and the Lord told me to tell you that that child that you've lost to a cult is going to come home and is going to be okay. God's watching over that child. And the man that was cussing me out a minute before put his hands over his face and started weeping. And I said, sir, I said, I think the Lord brought you to sit next to me because he wants you to know no matter what's happened to you in the past, God really, really loves you. And he looks at me and he says, no God that I know could ever love me. And I said, well, maybe you don't know the real God, the true God. And he turned and he wiped the tears from his face and he turned in to me in the seat and he was instantly sober. And he said, well, then why don't you tell me about him? And for the next two hours, I was able to share the truth of the gospel and the goodness of God with that man. And at the end of that conversation, at the end of that, he allowed me, a minister, to pray for him. Amen? And we st he actually was a very wealthy CEO of a corporation that I will not name. His plane was broken. He was slumming it in public, public transportation. <laughs> and he ended up having a divine encounter with God. Amen. 
the, my point is this. You carry that inside of you. You carry that same thing inside of you. That God can make you instant in season to be a harvester for his kingdom. And so I want you to stand up with me if you don't mind. And we're going to just pray for this, okay? All right, let's decree together, all right? I am a dynamo, a powerhouse for God's glory, generating light to light up my world. I will be bold and courageous. To... I am a nation changer and will stand my ground under pressure. My testimony will release revival. My words will shift the atmosphere and change my world because the dynamo is in my mouth. My miracle is in my mouth. My victory is in my mouth. I will speak with new authority and demons will flee. Angels will be loosed and the kingdom of God will be advanced. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Listen, I, I heard the Lord saying that in, in this season. I, I felt like the Lord was saying that his, the persecutors were going to become the propagators. Just like God saved Saul and Saul became a great harvester. The persecutors. So how many of you have some persecutors in your life? You've got some family in your life or some people in your life that persecute or are hostile towards your walk with God. I'm telling you, <laughs> your persecutors are going to become divine propagators because God's turning things around. Amen? Number three, the anointing to break through impossibility and accomplish your mission. This is all tied into that word dunamis. Okay, the anointing to break through impossibility and to accomplish your mission. You can go to that next slide. Mark chapter 9 verse 23 says, If you can believe, all things are possible for him that believes. I love the way the message translation says it. The message translation says, become what you believe. So the question is, do we believe what we believe we believe? Come on, God's going to put his hand inside of us. When it says all things are possible, that word possible is the word dunata, which comes from the same root word as dunamis, and it means powerful, able, possible, capable, strong, to have potential. It means to be mission-minded. That's where God is giving us permission to dream big dreams and then turn our big dreams into Holy Ghost missions, Holy Ghost assignments that are going to turn your business world upside down, that are going to turn your neighborhood upside down, that are going to turn this community upside down, that can turn this state and this nation upside down. How many believe that God is looking for a mission-minded church? A mission-minded ecclesia. Listen, when you get a mission, when you get mission-minded, you get focused. Yeah. 